All right, chat. We do this. We move. It is the biggest game in UMass history coming up. We play our, our, our biggest rivals in UConn before probably facing them again for the conference championship. Before we do that, though, we get to our recruitment needs for the week. Gong Show, what's going on, buddy? I'm doing well. It's been a good night. Uh, we are in for these three wide receivers. We still have to scout them. Uh, in terms of the O-line, we're in first for everybody. Um, Sonny Brown. Not going to be able to do much for this guy, but that's okay. Of course, now it's just waiting to see how many O-linemen we actually want to end up with. How many do we want to end up with? Because we've already ended up with, I believe, yeah, five. Five O-linemen joining the team. I'd be happy with one or two more. So honestly, removing Sonny Brown wouldn't be the worst idea because he's not the best one of the group. I think, I think now the best thing to do would be to remove some of these lower level dudes. Honestly. Yeah! Hate to say it. Coco! Coco, Coco, dropping that raid. You'd love to see it. Coco, how'd the stream go, buddy? <laughs> I love the message you told everybody to pass along. Let's remove Sonny Brown from that list. Uh, honestly, Bryson Goodman, we're going to remove him as well. We don't really need him anymore. Coco, I figured you were tired because you normally don't end your stream this early. We're going to remove Randy Jenkins as well. So we're going to look for the 70s and up. Terrence Bell, Josh Soul. Foster, Harvey, and Davis, and then we might even shorten it up from there. Coco, glad to hit a stream with Waldo. I don't know what you were up to. I don't know what you were playing, but I thank you very much for that host. Coco, uh, as I'm sure you guys who are just watching him know, hypes me up way too goddamn much. But I thank him for doing that. What the hell did I... Why is the... Uh, huh, why'd the shout-out not work? Ah, you know. You guys know to follow Coco already. NHL franchise and fall, guys. That sounds awful. <laughs> that sounds just horrible. Better you than me, buddy. As someone else who played NHL franchise earlier tonight. Alright, for these kickers, we're good to go too, man. Sweet. Uh, David Beck's ready to schedule a visit, but there's no room. So again, I really want to get one of those two, if not both of them. But we'll leave these guys on the board for the moment too. So... Oh, with that then, let's look at the oh, rankings here. Oh, good for you! I'm just going to guess it's Polo YTB. Thank you for the fall. <sighs> you know, Coco, it's a shame that Fall Guys decided to screw me out of crowns a year ago because I just never, I never went back to it. Like, I'm sure people will remember. I never, when I said I'm never playing Fall Guys again, it's been almost a year and I've never gone back to it. Not once, not off stream, nothing. And again, it was just that one moment where it happened two to three times where you die for the crown at the end and my guy went through the crown and didn't get it. That happened to me three times and I said, fuck this game. <laughs> I never went back. Uh, let's put some time into Brian Bullock here. I mostly like the sports game, but Fall Guys the exception. I mean, I agree. It's a pretty fun game. But just early on, Early on, there were those moments where I just don't know if the net code for that game was where it needed to be. Because obviously, I don't think they expected to be that big. And, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, that resulted in a mad toog for a little bit. <laughs> Spending a year. Almost, man. I mean, Fall Guys. Fall Guys hit that point of being super popular almost a year ago, yeah. Crazy as this to think, dude, we have been in a pandemic lifestyle for nearly a year. I don't think we're going to be able to fight for Kevin Hicks here. I think Notre Dame's going to be too far ahead. But, uh, we'll try. Just because I can't trash talk Notre Dame. Not too much I can do there. Unless Notre Dame slips up and, like, just doesn't try to recruit him. It's probably the only way I can get him. Uh, we're in second for Darius Franklin here. EA rips you off in a game like once a week and you still play it. Well, yeah, but that's because I've I have known as an NHL guy. <laughs> as opposed to Fall Guys where it's like, well, you know. 
There's a slight difference. Also, I haven't been playing Fall Guys since I was like three years old. Whereas with NHL and FIFA, no matter how much they piss me off, I can't quit them and it infuriates me that I can't quit them. I mean, I could, but it would be like, okay, I'm just like selling all my consoles and moving to the woods type of quit them, you know? Which doesn't sound like a horrible idea, really. It really doesn't. We got a lot of people on soft commits. Yes, we do. The good thing is we're at the stage now where I'm pretty much going to be able to just kind of uh, sneak in for a lot of these guys once we get to the recruitment weeks. All right, I got a thousand people on visits this week, and by a thousand, I mean like five. Oh, it's not gonna sort like I wanted it to. All right, Mr. Foster. I can't really sell you on too much. Should probably just do talk to professors only, but that's all right. Again, a lot of these guys I'm just looking to bring in for the sake of depth. Just because they were rather easy recruits. I don't think for the majority of them I even offered them a scholarship yet. I didn't. So if we can get these guys without a scholarship, that's pretty sweet. Let's kind of double it up. For anybody coming over from Coco's that doesn't know what the hell we're doing, we're obviously playing NCAA Football 13. We are trying to take UMass, a school that at the time absolutely sucked and still kind of sucks. Uh, and turning them into the best, because that's that's what we do on basically every single game I play. Um, hmm. I do have room to add other people. Let's see what we got. Let's go to all prospects, see what the best... Oh boy, okay, well the top ten are all gone. So the commit tab, we are looking for people who are in the top five phase or lower after the top 70, because that was our cutoff point before. So sadly, athlete David Chase, we're gonna go for him. Uh, I really don't need running back, so we'll hold off on Sean Robinson. Uh, wide receiver Dusty Thompson we'll look at. Quarterback Victor Walker. I think I had that written down only I really don't need quarterbacks. Ah, they're in the maybe category. Let's go for Victor Walker. Athlete Chris Coleman, pass Christian, Mississippi. Corner Clint Long. Who else do we have? Athlete Antoine Gonzalez. Athlete John Charles. Paul Whitaker, defensive end. Running back Joe Mosley, which again I'll pretty much avoid. Tight end Scott Davis. All right, one on one. Watch YouTube vids on the train, so watch your stream as I am in the future. <laughs> Fair enough. Coco, how did I not mod as you yet? What's the matter with me? What is the matter with me? Alright, let's see who we can talk to here to try and make up some ground. Let's go with... Athlete means they can play multiple positions, yes. Alright, let's go three hours for all these new recruits. Start throwing some promises out there that I'm never going to deliver on, <laughs> for the most part. And uh, see if we can join the conversation for some of these players. You, um, <clears throat> Utah, Oregon, and Minnesota. Oh, I adore seeing no positions needed in terms of necessary recruits. It's the best thing in the world. <laughs> It's so nice to not have the pressure of like, okay, cool, if someone doesn't sign, I'm screwed. Pasadena, Texas, not Pasadena, California. Fair enough. Hit him with the same three promises and see if we can crack the top three to five for any of these dudes. Did I see any of tonight's New Japan results? I did not. Because of when I stream, I often don't see the results of a lot of this stuff uh, until after the stream. Unless I end up seeing it on uh, like Twitter or something beforehand. Let's see, Chris Coleman. Make some promises to you, sir. 
still got to play UConn coming up here too. Victor Walker, another scrambler. 5'11", though. Very, di very, very different from the Cam Newton clone that we happen to have. Not too shabby. Dusty Thompson. Not enough people named Dusty. West Memphis. Good old West Memphis, Arkansas. The home of former WWF and WWE champion Sid Vicious. Psycho Sid, baby. The innovator of the fist bump. Is that true? No. But he's the first person I ever remember seeing doing it. And as... As so many great, great inventors can tell you, it doesn't matter if you invented it. It just matters if you brought it to pop culture first. <laughs> Shout out to <laughs> some of the great inventors of our time who didn't invent shit. <clears throat> or at least not as much as they claim. 22. Damn right. It's a monster truck game coming out on Tuesday. Eh. 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 <laughs> I can't say I have that much interest. There's a very good chance we're going to be playing NASCAR on Saturday. So, I'm excited for that. Very excited for that. Alright, I'm also excited for this. We are, I believe, 10-1 and one on the season? 9-1 and one on the season. Looking to go 10-1 and one against our biggest competition, our biggest rivals in UConn. We are the favorites. They have an equally good rush and pass offense. They have a very, very good pass defense. Okay. So in terms of the defense, we'll go 50-50. They had a really good pass defense, though, so we're going to go pretty run heavy. Let's see if that works out. Set up softball season his contract so he can play his league games. <laughs> that man loves softball. He does. Here we go. The rivalry. UConn and UMass. The U game. <clears throat> our final game of the regular season. Looking to hit our... I mean, we already have hit our highest win total ever. It's just a matter of how good it's going to be. And we need this win badly. Badly. We dropped our only game to NC State. A team that I was really hoping we would beat. Underrated promo, Sid or Scott Steiner. Uh, well, I mean, Sid's promo is, you gotta speak really quiet, and then you yell. Uh, Scott Steiner is just fucking yelling all the time, nonsensically. So really, it's up to you. So in terms of underrated, I don't know if I either have underrated promo abilities, Doc. Here we go, guys. This will be the last home game of Kenny Cobb's career, in which he's barely played at home. Here we go. Don't know why we have so much red and blue here. Through the first quarter we go. 7-0 UConn. On the verge of making it 14-0. There it is, 14-0 UConn, now 14-7. 14 all is the score at the half. Great little comeback there. Four-yard rushing touchdown for Butler. And before that, it was a four-yard rush by the wide receiver in Parks. Let's go through the third. Touchdown, UMass. Now 21 unanswered points. But we are tied at 21. Heading into the fourth. Damn. It was a, a eight-yard touchdown pass to Parks for the touchdown. It's our possession here. Let's see what the boys can do. The answer is fumble. UConn recovers. UConn scores. I'm going to trust the boys on this drive. Touchdown, 28 all. Oh, damn. This one's going to go down to the wire here, guys. It's going to go down to the wire. Let's see what happens. Let us see what happens. UConn offense is out. We're going to trust our boys here. See if they can get it done. Check down throw. Pickup of six. 
Studio update as Kansas State looks like they're going to beat Oklahoma. It's pretty close, though. Oklahoma's 7-4 on the year. Uh, again, we will watch the play. Pedro Bowser. What a name. What a name for Pedro Bowser. Second and four. Two minutes left. Hand off to the running back. He is stuffed, but he does get the first down. Damn. Did a good job to drive through. Stops the clock for UConn. Come on, boys. It's time for a game-changing play here. What's it going to be? Can't get to him. On the outside, throw out to the left. Caught. Big, big pickup for UConn. Antonio Stewart's having himself a day. This does not help our situation, does it? 138 to go. Ball up to the 41 from the looks of it. See what they can do on another first down. Throw out to the left. Caught again. Pickup of six. And they are driving right now, and it looks like we have no response. Come on. One big play. Can change the entire outlook here. Quick step back. Throw out to the left and out. He felt a pretty crazy sense of pressure. Third and four here. This stop could be the game. Can we make it? I don't know if they're in field goal range. For most kickers, the answer is no. They're 8 of 11 on third down. Strong formation here. There's the handoff. First down for UConn. <sighs> Looks like the running back is down and hurts. 128 to go. Ball at the 28. They're definitely in field goal range now. Are they just going to wind down that clock? Stewart, handoff. On the draw. Pickup of two. And unfortunately, I think now is the time where we look to burn these timeouts. We got no choice. We have no choice but to burn those timeouts to stop that clock from going because I'm pretty sure they are in field goal range. Second and eight. Man in motion again. No handoff this time. Big drop back. Stewart out to the right. Caught. Stopped. Before the line. Third and three. UConn calls the timeout. Which is very helpful to me. So third and three. A minute to go. A stop here would be huge to force the field goal. Otherwise we are probably screwed. Shotgun here for Stewart. Looking, throws out to his right. Caught, first down. 55 seconds to go. UConn continuing the drive. They're up to the 12. We are probably screwed. I'm never going to get the ball back in my hands. Matty, what's going on, buddy? It looks like we're going to pick up our second loss of the season. Stewart gets decked. I'm going to avoid calling the timeout here, man. It's a tough call. Carlson, what's going on? We're doing all right. Unfortunately, we're, we're struggling a little bit. 20 seconds to go. There's the pitch. Destroyed on the play, but no fumble. Oh, my God. Well, they do have the timeout here. I'm just going to see if the clock can wind down. They call their timeout with five seconds left. The defense couldn't make the stop. Here comes the field goal try from the 16. Our coach ices him. I think we're going to fall just short here, guys, to UConn. That's pretty devastating. Can they make this kick? It's a chip shot. Kick is up. That is right down the middle. UConn takes the lead with two seconds to go. There is a good chance that we will be rematching them. In the conference title game. Let's see what Sims can do. This is it right here. Sims! Can't break free of the last guy. Nowhere to go. UConn wins. 31-28 on the road. Ah, that's, that's a tough loss. We overcame some tough competition this season, but we also 
really dropped the ball against some tough competition this season as well. Only two losses, but that's that's. See, even if we win the conference, I don't know if I'm going to move us to a different conference at this stage. Like, we need to prove that we can beat UConn and win this conference handedly before we even risk going anywhere else. Unfortunately, that last man on that kick return, I just couldn't get the angle on him with Sims. So Kenny Cobbs uh, goes winless against UConn in his tenure here. And Antonio Stewart on the other side absolutely shredded us. Damn. So we likely have two games left this season, but that is the one that we wanted. And we did not get it. Not being able to beat UConn really sucks after beating someone like Buffalo. I'm afraid to hit the button here, but let's see what happens. Did it for ease. I'm just going to let it go. As much as I'd love to get a second chance to win that, I'd, just, I'd rather not have to restart the game and sim through it. Let's just let it go. There we go. It's official. It is official. UConn wins it. 31 to 28 off of a field goal with two seconds left. Cobbs won 25 to 38 with two touchdowns, 375 yards. He had a phenomenal game. Stewart was that much better though. Running wise, the running game was abysmal. We just never got the running game going. Sean Sims had a great game. But the offensive line struggled as well. I mean, four sacks allowed. And then defensively, I mean, five tackles for loss, a couple of sacks there, McNair and Bowen. No field goal attempts for John Small. It's just, yeah, it just didn't happen. It just didn't happen for us there, unfortunately. I and mean, like I said, we still, I think, have the conference championship game, as well as probably a bowl game. Unless uh, that loss just screwed it up, which could be the case. <clears throat> a 31-28 loss to UConn, down to 9-2. It's our best season ever, with our toughest schedule ever, but that still really sucks. That really sucks. That's one that we probably should not have lost if we're calling a spade a spade here. And then we get the long, long, long 360 era load times. Again, I will say it every time. I wish I could play this with the Series X load times. I would be over the moon. <laughs> it's probably the best thing I'm looking forward to about NCAA if it's half decent when EA puts it out in a couple of years, which, hey, not holding my breath. Um, yeah. Yeah, I miss the... Miss those load times. Definitely miss those load times. Conference championship. We should be playing UConn. I hope. I hope. We got another kicker. It's hand. The two-star option. That's not that bad. That can definitely change now how we approach the other kickers. We did not get into the conference championship. That loss. I think that loss screwed us. It's just it awarded it to UConn. We threw away the conference championship round because of that loss. That sucks, man. That sucks. That was for the conference title when we blew it. We absolutely blew it. Damn. Now we got no other time to recruit this week either. So we are likely to get a bowl game. In terms of the BCS rankings, Alabama number one team right now but they do play Mizzou nobody else is up there yeah JD you're not wrong you needed a bigger conference to get a chance at it bowl projections where do they have us the Hawaii Bowl which we've been to before against Western Kentucky which I think we played them before 
So, we're likely to get a bowl game, obviously with a record like that, but... Cobbs up there for the Maxwell. Top offensive player. And again, he's gonna, yeah, he's still gonna be the only one that's up there, unfortunately, for an award. Well, let's, uh, let's see what happens. Might as well skip to bowl season. And it looks like it will be the Hawaii Bowl unless anything changes. That's just still so disappointing, man. We absolutely had a chance at that conference title. So definitely we're not moving to a different conference. Like, we're staying here until we can prove that we're good enough to beat UConn. There's nothing else to do. Nothing else to do than just stay here until we can prove we're good enough. And unfortunately, even under Kenny, even under Kenny Cobb's tenure, we weren't good enough. Like, this bowl game will be his send-off. He might be the first player that we send to the pros, but that is a huge opportunity. And honestly, I mean, you look at last year, we didn't make the playoffs, or we didn't make a bowl game even. Last year was a setback. This year wasn't much of an improvement. We improved our record, but still, we couldn't, uh, couldn't overtake UConn for top dogs of the conference. It is our third bowl game in five seasons. You're not wrong. We will be playing Western Kentucky in Hawaii for the second time in three years, I think. Or four years, so. It's a rematch, I believe, of the season two bowl. If I'm not mistaken, that was Western Kentucky. Uh, that should be an ass kicking. Like, let's be honest. It's a huge disappointment for this team to, uh, to be set up here. Uh, this team runs the ball and has good run defense. So we are definitely going to pass the ball a lot and uh, go pretty heavy into run defense as well. The last game of Kenny Cobbs' career, his tenure here at UMass. We will take a look at the bowl games here. <clears throat> See what we got. UConn ends up playing uh, Toledo, though, so it's almost like we got a better, you know, better bowl game than they did. National title game is Stanford and Ohio State, which means Bama choked. Cotton Bowl is Auburn and Oklahoma. Fiesta Bowl is BYU and Alabama. Orange Bowl, Clemson and Notre Dame. Sugar Bowl, Kansas State and Mizzou. The Rose Bowl is Wisconsin and USC. A Tennessee, Maryland, Gator Bowl. So... I'm glad you bought this game because it is a fantastic game. I've had a lot of people say that. Like, yeah, I bought this game because I watched it play. <laughs> Which is pretty sweet. I will admit. Got nothing to do. There's no more recruitment. Let's move on. Hopefully we kick the shit out of Western Kentucky. Of course, we'll get a look at our end of season stats as well. But hopefully we kick the ever loving hell out of Western Kentucky to at least send Kenny Cobbs off in style. But, you know, what are you going to do? Oh, what are you going to do? Buck Williams. <laughs> oh, Buck Williams is who we have to watch out for, huh? Watch out for Buck Williams. Jesus. Oh, Sean Sims. It's his junior year. Back in Hawaii. We've returned to the scene of the crime. We lost here convincingly a few years ago. Uh, we'll Belichick this and kick it away to start. Let's see what happens again. This should be a whooping. We go through the first quarter. Three to nothing, UMass. Ten nothing, UMass. A late touchdown there for Parks. Not bad. We go to the half. Now ten six. Ten six at the half. They shut us out there in the second quarter. I told off Alexi Lawless on Twitter, and he actually responded to me. I thought you'd be proud. No, I'm never proud of someone shit talking someone just to get their attention. I'm not proud of you at all. Leave Alexi Lawless alone. To the fourth we go. 17-6 UMass is the score heading into the fourth. This has hardly been a blowout. 
which is very disappointing. It was a four yard rushing touchdown for Butler. Uh, we fumble. Western Kentucky in possession, and they can't go anywhere. We're forced to punt. Three minutes left, just turnover after turnover. Small punts. All right. <clears throat> let's let's uh, let's play a little bit. I think it's fairly obvious we got this win in the books. We got this win in the books. Let's get a little bit of playing time in here for the last time with some of these guys, and hopefully we can get the ball back to get one more memorable run with Kenny Cobbs. That was close for Bowen. Sit down, young man. Oh, boy. Let's just keep blitzing these bastards. House missed. Oh, my God. Guerrero, six foot five. Just got outworked in the air. Wow. 6'5", Guerrero just got outworked and didn't pick that off. I'm I'm embarrassed, Mr. Guerrero. You blew it. boy, Bowen. House doesn't have the best agility, so the second that quarterback starts moving, it's actually pretty tough to get him. Oh, we'll go with a QB spy, because it looks like they like to send him on occasion. Come on, House, break on through. boy Bolden. Disgrace to the Guerrero name. Uh, Mike Carr. Down to the injury. That's not our Mike Carr, though, so that's fine. If it was Madden, you would have picked it off for sure. Definitely. All right, Mr. Palmer. One minute left. Timeout from Western Kentucky. And uh, let's go with that quarterback spy option again. 5 of 14 on third down. We should be okay, I hope. Mr. House just mowing people down, and okay, they found a soft spot in man coverage. I do have some concerns about this defense. They're going to get better over the years, but I do have some concerns. They spiked the ball. 52 seconds left. That was zone. I mean, it was modified. We had one man in spy, two guys in zone, and the rest of the receivers were good to go. Second down, ten yards to go. We had one safety in zone over the middle, one linebacker in zone over the middle, but the corners weren't in zone. Bailey. Good hit by ball. Way to take him down. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, it was it was a mix, right? It was a mixture. Uh, yeah, kind of same thing there where it's a lot of, uh, we got one dude in zone, but a lot of people in man. Oh, here we go. One more attempt for old Western Kentucky. It has not exactly been the most dominant performance in the world, but ultimately I will, uh, I will take it that we're going to walk away with a win here in another bowl game. It's going to be our second bowl win in our tenure. That is out of the back of the end zone. That is the turnover on downs, and we get the ball back with 31 seconds to go. And we'll see if we can pull off one more miracle play here with one Mr. Cobbs. And uh, that wasn't quite the miracle play. I mean, fair play. They called the timeout to be just a horrible, horrible sportsman. We'll keep that read option going. Good old Kenneth Cobbs, guys. This is it for his career. Gets the hand off the butler, who can't quite get the juke. We'll call the timeout, of course. We shall see. We shall see what we can do here. Let's see if we can air it out. He never had the best arm. He had incredible passing accuracy. And that accuracy pays off. White is not the fastest. <laughs> a big game. Is this Cobb's senior season? Yep, this is his final appearance for us. This is it. Clock's ticking. Let's see what we can do on this option. Should be probably our second to last play unless it's a touchdown. Kenny Cobbs ends his career here at UMass. 
with a lovely little sneak on the option. The best quarterback in history. We will miss you, Kenny. Oh my God, we will miss you. The way he helped jumpstart this program cannot be overlooked because without him, we would not be anywhere close to where we are right now. There is no doubt about it. He absolutely helped make this team what it is. No doubt. What an option. Butler's in. <sighs> Kenny Cobbs ends his career on a high note here. Will he be the first man to go pro? Time will tell. Let's uh, let's kick an onside option here. Just see what the hell happens. I booted that way too hard. Crush him. Stretch him. That's it. UMass wins their second bowl game on three attempts. Not a bad way to end the career of one Kenny Cobbs. The stash. God, those guys are strong if they're able to boost the stash onto their shoulders because that man is a unit. 25-6 to six over Western Kentucky. 10-2 on the season. Our best record by far. So Kenny Cobbs helps set the standard. Where will this team go next? Because we're not going to stop until we're national champions, damn it. The stash, though, gets another trophy under his belt. That very, very sturdy belt. Western Kentucky gets pooped on. Which is no real surprise. Kenny Cobbs, player of the game in his final game. Only 12 completed passes. But what a way for Kenny Cobbs to depart into the sunset. We win the Hawaii Bowl, where we lost in Cobb's first ever ball game. It is bowl season. Oh, I love the warping. <laughs> God, the replays look so funny. I still can't believe Guerrero missed that. Still can't believe it. God, look at the height difference between those guys. Jesus, it's no wonder why he outmuscled them. I think we have quarterbacks in the system. We do have other good quarterbacks in the system. <laughs> Thanks for the memories. Coco, it just makes me think of leave the memories alone. Here's Ric Flair crying, even though he's going to wrestle a year later. I don't want to see. Oh, God. It's a max tenure. Four playing years, yes. So five years in total if we redshirt him. UConn won their game. Of course they did. I was crying in Orlando like a sucker. Dude, I remember watching that on TV and I teared up. And then he went to TNA and I'm just like, Fuck you, Rick. That is your real name. Uh, so Cobbs was the MVP despite no passing touchdowns. <laughs> 12 of 28. I don't know how the hell Kenny Cobbs got player of the game, but I'll take it. It probably should have been Ryan Butler. Our offense was uh, a little bit stagnant at times. Oh, no wonder why that was, uh, you know, our option was slow. It was our tight end in Adrian White. Only one sack allowed. That was Merriman's final game as well. Our elite fullback turned lineman. Aaron Merriman's done here as well. Six tackles for Teddy Palmer in that game as well as Brad Bowen. Three sacks for Teddy Palmer. What a guy. What a man, what a man, what a man. And then John Small, of course, misses a field goal in his final game. Because he sucks. <laughs> Not a bad way to end the season. Not at all. Not at all. We have the Hawaii Bowl trophy to our credit. 10 and 2. To end the season. We take down the Hilltoppers. And to look at our stats on the year. Cobbs finished third in total yards for quarterbacks, apparently. Cobbs this year went uh, 226 to 35, 3,500 yards, 26 touchdowns, 10 picks. Averaged almost 300 yards a game. Running back wise, 1,000 yard season for Ryan Butler with nine touchdowns. Cobbs had nine touchdowns as well on the year. Receiving wise, 60 receptions for Sean Sims. Nearly hit 1,000 yards receiving. 
his seven touchdowns, second only to John Parks, a senior who is leaving this team as well. So not bad for John Parks to get a touchdown or uh, you know, to walk away with the touchdown crown for the team. Merriman uh, was not the best offensive lineman, uh, you know, fill in, but he did okay. He did okay. And defensively, Clint Gordon as a freshman led the way in terms of tackles. Tackles for loss was Palmer. Seven and a half sacks for Teddy Palmer as well. Interception king was Wade Guerrero. You wouldn't know it. And then kicking wise. Small 15 of 20. God damn you. <clears throat> Let's take a look here around the nation. Cobbs was third in passing yards, though. Behind the guy at Texas Tech and LA Tech. Rushing-wise, Butler was in the top 50 in the nation with uh, 1,062. <clears throat> Receiving-wise, Sims was 43rd in the nation in terms of yardage. Tackle leader, Bowen, was 68th. Tulane was up there. Sack leader, Palmer, was 29th in the nation. Guerrero was 67th in terms of picks. And in terms of kicking later, I mean, let's be honest, yeah, Small was the 83rd in terms of longest field goal, 44. What an ass. Uh, if we look at our school records, Kenny Cobbs apparently tied the record for longest pass or has the record for longest passing touchdown in NCAA history. <clears throat> a 96-yard touchdown pass. Kenny Cobbs is in the NCAA record book, although he did not break any school records. Go figure. Receiving-wise, no records broken there as well. No defensive records yet, no rushing records yet. So, surprisingly, we don't have any uh, new school records, but Kenny Cobbs is in the all-time record book. NCAA wise we'll get a look at the final results for the end of the bowl season yeah it sucks I don't recall a 96 yard touchdown thrown by us we definitely had one like two lane I played like one game on too low of a difficulty and we threw for like 7,000 yards so hey you take the good with the bad we did not claim our spot atop of the whack, but I still think we have a decent little future here, in all honesty. And I think we're going to be alright, even if it takes one more season to get to the point where I'm confident that we could switch conferences and still be competitive. While it would be nice, of course, to have, you know, the ability to recruit based on a more prestigious conference, if we're also getting spanked in that conference, then it's not going to matter. So, it's kind of the situation that we're stuck in right now, I would say. But, all in all, still feeling pretty good. Still feeling pretty good, all in all. Uh, I like dropping the difficulty all the way down, just carving it up. I mean, it can be fun. <laughs> to just get absolutely every goddamn record in one game. All right, so here we go. The final week of the season. Let's take a look there at the bowl winners, shall we? Of course, UConn beat Toledo. No real surprise there. Let's see. Rose Bowl goes to USC over Wisconsin, pretty convincingly. Sugar Bowl goes to Mizzou over Kansas State. Big win for them. Orange Bowl to Clemson over Notre Dame. Alabama wins the Fiesta Bowl 24-3 over BYU. Cotton Bowl to Oklahoma over Auburn. And the national title goes to Stanford. 28-23 over Ohio State. Andrew Luck would be so proud. Stanford wins the national title. We've had quite a few different national title winners in the first five years of this. <sighs> Let's get to the bad news, guys. The end of the season. The end of the season. I think we get to end tonight by finding out whether or not 
Mr. Cobbs decided to go pro or wanted to go somewhere else? That is the question. CFL. CFL count. <laughs> Does that count? I mean, I guess ask Doug Flutie and Dwayne Johnson, right? God, I, I wish the AAF was still a thing. The Alliance of American Football. Remember when that was a thing for all of a month? <laughs> oh, I miss the AAF, man. That was a fun league for all of five seconds. I'm going to miss it. I mean, hopefully the XFL comes back as well. Whoops. Turns out I didn't hit the button there. I didn't realize I had to double press. Uh, coaching change already there. Let's go to players leaving. Sorry that we sat there. Long live the Alliance. I get that reference. Dwayne's bringing it back. Yeah, but I mean, there's no guarantees it's going to work the same way. You know, that's my concern. Is it really does feel like the, the XFL was in a decent little spot. I mean, I enjoyed those games for sure. Again, the uh, AAF was a shit show, but I loved it. <laughs> Players leaving. Here we go, guys. Kenny Cobbs has graduated. However, Alan Baker, a freshman who I recruited this year, uh, has decided to walk away. He's going to transfer out and go to Wyoming, which isn't a disaster for me. We're set at quarterback, so I'm not worried that Alan Baker... Alex to leave. He wouldn't have been our starter anyway. Wide receiver, of course, John Parks and Derek Thomas both leave. Which isn't that surprising. Again, those are the uh, two, uh, two of the final two guys that I hadn't recruited, I'm pretty sure. Aaron Merriman, we did recruit, though. Started his career at fullback, switched over to left tackle to end that career. We lose John Beck off of the O-line, which hurts quite a bit. But we have replacements on the way. And aside from that, it's just our kicker and John Small. Happy trails. So yeah, we can't convince Alan Baker because we made too many promises. I'm perfectly fine with him leaving. Again, we are definitely set at quarterback. Plus, I have running backs or wide receivers who were athletes that could be moved to quarterback if we weren't good. So we're set. Draft results. Did Kenny Cobbs go pro? The answer is no. Kenny Cobbs elected to be done the sport of football and transfer requests nobody wants to switch over so Kenny Cobbs does not go pro that is the end of his football dream let's be honest <laughs> FCF Cobb on the way right let's be honest I mean I don't know I don't know if he would have uh, if he would have made it but yeah fan controlled football he's good to go so we get to the final stage of recruitment here. We have 18 scholarships left. So the big question now, we got a lot of people on a soft commit. We have Bell and Sowell on soft commits, as well as Foster or uh, Foster and Davis are there. Harvey's also on a soft commit. Honestly, I'm going to go for every single one of these O-linemen. I want that level of depth. I really do. Aside from that, where uh, Avery's also on a soft commit. In terms of the kickers, again, we've locked down Peterson and Hand. At this stage, I think I'm going to take Gant off the list, even though he's on a soft commit. And we're going to see what happens with Wilkinson. And then the hope is that we at least get one of these two to work alongside Hand, and then Peterson will probably just cut. So we're good in terms of the kicking game as well. But from there, I mean, that means, again, we can get whoever the hell we want. Or at least fight for whoever the hell we want. And if we look here, then, at the board, we are in first for Michael Foster. Since we're in first for him, let's go ahead and talk to him for two weeks. We will schedule that visit for right now. Uh, no, it doesn't tell you, like, what you guys are going to school for or anything, unfortunately. That'd be a pretty cool bit of depth, but... All right, so Michael Foster. Let's talk to you about the academic prestige. Uh, quarterback Victor Walker. 
I have a shot for this guy. Because we haven't even made him a scholarship offer yet. Let's scout him out. Vic, are you worth it? You might be. Victor Walker could be worth it. So uh, let's talk to him for like three hours. Give him that scholarship offer. We gotta find some stuff out about him anyway before that potential visit. I mean, we'll just see if we can get him. I mean, we did lose a quarterback, but we might be able to get another one. Uh, Bullock, we're in second four. I don't have him fully scouted yet. All right, so Brian is a 77. Let's talk to him for a couple hours here. Still no visits. Trash talk Oregon. Uh, I gotta find the importance there. Yeah, damn. Gotta get some sways for that visit to go better. Davis, we are in first four. Yeah, and up what's going on. How'd the stream go, buddy? All right, not gonna be able to sell Dan Davis on that. Little dangerous Danny Davis over here. Uh, I'm not gonna sell him on anything B minus related. Whitaker, we're in 10th four. Might as well go for him. I haven't offered him a scholarship yet, so we don't know. We don't really know if he's going to be worth it or not. Stream as well. Kraskin Mafia 3. I am going to replay that someday. Just don't know when. Probably after I replay Mafia 2 for the fourth time. Let's see, cornerback Clint Long. Got a chance for this guy too. San Dimas. Out of beautiful San Dimas. Uh, Wilkinson, we're in first four, soft commit. Schedule that visit for this week, buddy. And uh, find out how you feel about our coach stability. And the answer is you don't feel all that great, but that's okay. Mr. Wilkinson. What we do for you in terms of these visits? That should be a pretty good visit. Uh, Mr. Hicks, we're third four. He's in the top eight stage. Let's talk to him for a couple hours. Uh, again, this is one of the guys where I'm going to have a lot of trouble trying to compete with Notre Dame. But it's worth a shot. Coach stability is way the hell up there right now because they realize I'm not going anywhere. Uh, Joey! Joey So! Let's get that visit this week. I mean, that most pretty much guarantees that we're good to go. Westchester, Florida. Roll Joey. And you see that little green icon, you know you're good to go. Uh, David Beck. Gonna try to lock this guy down, too. Honestly, if we do, I can uh, avoid having to talk to that other kicker. This guy's gonna have a great visit this week, too. Guy is gonna have a very good visit. Clint Long. I think we can still put up a fight for this guy too. Offer him that scholarship. Find out a couple things about him. That helps with that being very high. If we can get that guy in a visit, we'll do very well. Uh, Scotty Davis. Still think we got a chance because there hasn't been a scholarship offer yet. Go ahead and offer him that. Find out some stuff about him. A lot of these guys caring about their academics helps me a lot. Uh, Coleman, we're in ninth. He's in the top five stage. I can still make something happen there. Only did two topics accidentally, but scholarship. Another guy that cares about academic prestige. This is beautiful. Thompson talk to you for a little bit here, buddy. Scholarship. He doesn't care about his academics, unfortunately. Nor the playing style. Uh, David Chase, same thing. Haven't offered you a scholarship yet. Let's get that in there. A lot of the answers being my dog. Doesn't think I should sign. Six foot four athlete, though, at 250. This guy could be a beautiful, beautiful addition. Uh, Johnny Charles, let's see what we got with you. And a lot of these guys are just those late targets that we have. 
that we knew we couldn't focus on because we needed the outline options. Nighthawk, take it easy. You're not going to miss much. Probably won't go too much longer on this stream. Got some stuff to do. I guess some goddamn sleep. You know, I just had to open my mouth about people caring about academic prestige because now they very much don't. Uh, Todd Harvey. Schedule you for a visit here in week one. Shame you don't care about coaching stability. Let's see what we got. One A minus in academic prestige. Terry Bell. Schedule you for that week one visit. Go for coach stability, doesn't care. Damn. Terrence. What else do we have here? Franklin. Oh, Darius Franklin. I don't think we're gonna be able to get this guy. That successful sway helps though. Apparently my championship contender status is up to a B minus now. Which is pretty sweet. Uh, Marvin Cunningham. So yeah, coach stability and championship contender going up means a lot. It's going to help us out here quite a bit. I haven't been able to see what my new promise setting is uh, up to. So we've made all of our promises to these guys. Whoops. Ah, whatever. Let's just do it. I'm going to hit the other button. Mr. Gray. West Fargo, because normal Fargo, North Dakota, it simply isn't enough. Okay, we got other guys who are ready to commit here, but I'm not as worried about them. Uh, Mickey. Actually, you know, if we do, uh, here, let's uh, do this. So Hammond. You're not the best option in the world, but I'm intrigued enough because I haven't had to offer you a scholarship. So, uh, Eddie, let's just see what you happen to like here. I really don't know what you like, so I'll just sell you on what I can sell you on. Bob Foster's not that great either, but I know I can just lock down this guy pretty much no problem for the sake of depth. So we might as well. We might as well. So I at least want to see how good the recruitment class is going to be for week one, because I'm hopeful, especially with how many people are in first four, that we could have a very, very good first week here. Should be, should be probable. We have 18 scholarships left. We don't need anybody specifically either, so we're looking pretty good. <laughs> let's go to week two. Might be the last thing that we do, but let's go to week two. Funky ass song, man. I'm digging it. Oh, holy shit. All right. Well, we got that kicker, Wilkinson. We got Sowell, Bell, Harvey, Beck. I got those top two kickers I wanted. And three more offensive linemen. Our special teams are going to be on an entirely different level now. 13 scholarships left. The O-line's at a different level now, too. This is fantastic. So in terms of kickers, uh, we're good. We brought in four kickers. <laughs> Uh, but at least that way, too, I mean, we, we had the depth in case we didn't get everybody. So, obviously, like, Cliff Peterson's fucked. But, like, these other three will definitely keep around. So, that's great news. And then from there... I mean, we're still going to be looking pretty damn good here. I don't know if I'm going to go pull myself away from this. Uh, Walker, we're up into fourth four. I can still try to get this guy. Okay, we know he's a 77. Let's see, Michael Foster, I mean, we're in first four. Let's just see if we can seal the deal. Problem is, I can't trash talk Notre Dame. At least not that much. 
But we'll do what I can to just get some separation here. Uh, Victor Walker. Problem is, he just doesn't care about these things. If I can sway the importance on these, then I can start trash talking Notre Dame. Or not Notre Dame. Uh, whoo, Oregon in this instance, which that just paid off big time. We might be able to make up ground. Uh, Bullock, we're in first four. He's ready for a visit. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going to be the best visit in the world, but hey, we'll try. I really need a sway to work here. Damn. That's okay. Mr. Bullock. Not too much I can sway him on. Uh, Paul Whitaker. I don't think I'm going to be able to make it work. Promises and scholarships out. We're 400 points back. Let's just bail on that dude. It's not worth the uh, point investment. Danny Davis. What do we got for you? And can't trash talk Notre Dame, unfortunately. Sway there would help out more in terms of points, but it's so low. It's not going to help anyway. Uh, Hicks, we're up in the second floor. How far ahead's Notre Dame? We're right there. This dude is completely undecided on what he's going to do. Completely. Looks like he's going to hang around to the 75. Again, I just can't trash talk Notre Dame on anything. It really hurts. Really, really hurts to not be able to trash talk. The only thing I can hope for is that they just don't try. And they kind of let that guy, the attention on him, slip. Uh, Clint Long. We're up in the fourth out of five. We got a chance at this dude. For sure. How good is he, though? Uh, 77, potentially. All right, well, at least we know he's not a... Not a complete bust. Definitely trash talk, Virginia Tech and company, where we can. That is a lot of successful trash talk on Virginia Tech. Not so much on Oregon. It was a pretty good week, though. Uh, Davis, we're up in the third four. Good little comeback. Trash talk, OSU. A bit more trash talk on OSU, nothing too crazy. And more trash talk towards OSU. Beautiful. Uh, honestly, let's use those final 20 minutes on uh, Davis for the hell of it. Maybe drifting towards being a bust, but not too concerning. Uh, Coleman. Chris Coleman. Get you in for that visit this week. Trash talk Temple, even though it's the best school ever. Oh, Temple screwed. We're going to get that guy. We'll at least be in first. I don't know if we'll be able to lock him down, but we'll at least be in first by the end of this. Let's see, Dusty Thompson. We're in third four. Just hope that we're allowed to shit talk Arkansas because I don't have enough time to sway these opinions. Fortunately, everything I can sell him on, he doesn't give a single fuck about. And I just don't have time to work on the sways. Uh, David Chase, we're probably out. I've made the promises and the scholarship offer. We'll get rid of him. Uh, John Charles, same thing. We're going to be out on him. Gonzalez, we're probably out on too. Not technically, but I'm just not liking the uh, looks of our chances there. Let's see. Darius Franklin, we somehow made it up the first with. I don't know how we did that. Screw you, Northwestern is how. Uh, Martin Cunningham, we're in first four. Talk some trash about Boise State. Talk more trash about Boise State. We're going to be in such a good spot moving forward here. Uh, Jason Green. Get you in for that visit this week, because why the hell not? Trash talk, Ohio State. If I can get a sway here, that'd be great. That's beautiful. This guy doesn't look like he's the best in the world, but hey, I'll take him. We want options. Uh, let's see, Gray we're in first for. 
See, the problem is I can't be overly confident that we're going to do amazing here, just because we were in first for the vast majority of players on our list heading into last year's offseason. And, uh, yeah, we, we missed. Like on signing day, everyone bailed. So... Doesn't care that much about coach stability. That sucks. And Mr. Cook. Still not going to offer you a scholarship. You should be able to get the job done without having to do so. Wouldn't mind picking you up for depth, especially if you end up being a gem. I'm not sure what I can sell you on. Mr. Avery. Shit talk, BC. Shit talk him there. He doesn't care a ton, though. Let's see. Let's just hope for the best with those two. Bob Foster. Still love this name, Bob Foster. I mean, you got a school of our caliber coming and talking to you. Like, you're really not going to just automatically sign? What, do you want to go to Buffalo, where you're going to actually play? Like, sure, you're going to play, but you're going to play in a goddamn parking lot. Like, come on. Really think about your future here. Really think about it. Alright. So we got 250 left. I have room for five more dudes on the board. Let's go uh, see who's out there. I mean, the only thing we can do right now is just get the best draft board that we possibly can. So we know 101 was my last cutoff point. Yeah, with Davis. So the next dude looks like it's going to be uh, Matt White. What else do we have here? Austin McCutcheon. A lot of wide receivers. Running back Odell Connor. Again, we really don't need running backs. Eddie Payne. At linebacker. Jason Woods out of El Paso, Texas. Jesse Fritz. A lot of wide receivers. A ton of wide receivers, actually. So let's see. Out of these five, let's do half an hour. For Matt White, we'll go with the old promise gambit. Let's see how close that gets us into the running. Was my, uh, was my value bar full on that, by the way? Almost. So, our coach integrity is still absolutely through the roof right now. Which is amazing. It's just such a cheat code. <laughs> Not an actual cheat code, but just to be able to know that we got all these boosts. Canadian, what's going on? You were just in time, probably for the end of the stream. Here in the next couple minutes. But, uh, I'm doing well. No complaints, except that I can't play this game 24-7. Alright, and then we'll find out what we can about this guy really quickly. It's going to be tough to trash talk TCU at all. And then Fritz, we got 20 minutes for you buddy. Because I did the math wrong. College Station, Texas. Alright, so here we go. It's uh, going to be the last sim that we happen to do here. And then we'll call it a stream. We'll head into week three. And reconvene tomorrow. That is the way to go. And of course we'll see how this squad sets up. But I think that's the big thing right now. It's just, hmm, how is this going to play out? The answer is hopefully well. Hopefully well indeed. Oh boy, I mean we did get some more recruits too, so I can't really complain. We're looking alright. God, I'm so happy we finally got to talk about good old fan controlled football. Hey, we got Foster! He was the number one target left on our board. And we get the big guard in Foster. This O-line 
is going to be nasty. Oh, this old line's going to be amazing. 12 scholarships left. We'll see where we rank in terms of top classes. But you look now. And yeah, to, to get Foster, I mean, look at that, man. Nelson, Smith, and Foster. 378 or better O-linemen joining the team for this year. We're up into first for Walker and for Long. And it doesn't look like any of our targets have committed elsewhere. Or commit, I should say. I mean, we're in the driver's seat right now. This team is going to be sick heading into next year. And top classes, we might already be up there. 14th in the nation right now with two four stars, seven three stars, and four two stars. We are now a three prestige club as well, or program. So it's not as many four star recruits yet, but we still have a lot of people in the running. We've had a top three class, I believe, three years in a row. So we'll see if we can get back there. But right now, I can't say I'm disappointed with where this team is at all. And I think these next uh, these next three weeks, then technically three, four, and five, we're going to be stacked by the end of it again.